problem is the lack of love and also harsh words uh, not you know not saying words of grace it's always criticism yelling and that is what hurts most marriages to improve the marriage to heal the marriage we need to learn to say um, to speak gently to use words of grace to guide people and respond to people and respond to the feelings uh, to, and then the communication is just the outside the inside is the heart to love to care to care about the other person to to really love and say I want to I want to build up the marriage I want the marriage to be healed now I I, I, I know that many people they just don't have this concept and so the marriage has different problems and we can bring healing we can bring healing by s saying sorry and also start to say uh, th you know to talk gently to think first before we talk and to find ways to guide the other person to understand uh, us and to understand us and also how to solve a certain problem together that we're willing to put time into the relationship it's not a waste of time to build up the relationship so many people thought it's a waste of time but it's not a waste of time and something God uh, really likes when we love the spouse because this is what the Bible tells us to do when we obey the Bible God is very happy so as pastors we should put God number one and then second we put, put our spouse and the family and then ministry so we don't put ministry before the marriage because if the marriage breaks apart the ministry will also break apart and it will also give the devil a foothold that a third person you know an affair can happen easily if there is no love and then we find another person has so much love now generally it's like this before marriage there can be more love in dating there's more love because the reason is it's more fun there is not much uh, responsibility so people generally enjoy dating because dating no responsibility and there's no big problem to face but after marriage there are a lot of problems to face and that's why after marriage uh, then the relationship can get sour because they don't if they don't build the relationship then it's painful but if they um, understand that we understand that when dating it's it's just interaction it's more fun activities but in marriage we have to face things together we have to manage things together manage problems together solve problems together then it takes more work then then we understand that that it takes effort but when there's a third person comes in and just have fun and wow it's feel like it's much better than than the wife because the wife is nagging but this woman is not nagging because there's nothing for this woman to nag about because it's just interaction it's more fun so we understand that if the marriage is not uh, doesn't have fun now it can build up we can build up the marriage by apologizing and loving each other and have good communication now it takes a lot of effort if the marriage has already broken down if there's a lot of pain in a marriage it is hard it is difficult now you can send me questions and tell me the situation in your family if you want to ask questions I can respond to that but to heal the marriage there must be forgiveness and confessing our sins apologizing and and forgiveness and then learn to talk gently uh, it doesn't work if we you know criticize the other person easily now I'm very careful in how I talk to my wife I don't want her to be hurt anytime I don't want her to be hurt I don't want her to have a negative feeling uh, toward me that she loves me so much I want her to keep this love toward me 
is very precious. Now, how can I keep that? I want to be as nice to her as possible, to be kind to her, listen to her, and love her all the time and take care of her all the time. Then she feel loved, and then she will continue to love me uh, with her whole heart. And then we can enjoy life and enjoy ministry. And God is pleased with that. So I hope when you understand this, that you work on your marriage to build it up. So we, um, we, want, we need to motivate, help each other to say, you know, if our marriage is better, then it's good, you know. So sincerely love, that's very important because that's the most important thing is from the inside out. And then submit, that's Ephesians 5.21 says, submitting to one another in the fear of God. And then wife submit to your own husband. So husband also submit to the wife. So we listen to the wife, listen to her needs, listen to the need of problem. And we need to, need to understand relationship is more important than matters. Very often people fight and yell because of matters, of things, of, of business, of work, of money. But relationship is more important than money, than work, than ministry, than any work we do. Because when we have good relationship, then we can have a good ministry. <clears throat> now we, we can learn this the language, five languages of love, words of affirmation. That means say words that will make the other person feel confirmed and loved. I love you, you are precious to me, you're important to me, what you did to me is wonderful, I'm happy to have you. So it works like that. And quality time, that we concentrate in the relationship and put down the cell phone and just spend time with the spouse. This is what um, women like very much. Women also like very much the word of affirmation and giving gifts. The gifts doesn't have to be expensive. It just express a heart of appreciation of the other and then acts of service helping in small and big things and taking care of the family and uh, t helping the other person uh, even simple things like your spouse is putting on a coat you just help him or her to put on the coat or when he has a backpack and he want to get something and then you open the zipper for him or her so that he can get the things in, uh, from the backpack those little things when, when my wife my wife comes home, I would get the slippers for her. So that's little things. And I'll take her stuff and then give her the slippers and I'll hug her and kiss her. So those are things I do when she comes home. And physical touch, touching, hugging, kissing. So those are important. And those actions are not necessarily uh, related to having sex. So it's not necessary every time touching means having sex. And you think of the love relationship is like a love bank. You deposit love and care and help and listening and support. Then you can get love, care and help and listening and support. If you don't give, you don't get it. And love and satisfy your spouse. Proverbs 5.18 Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth that should be blessed and then rejoice with her. Now, to change someone is not efficient to accuse, but it's efficient to affirm, to say you're improving, you're working on it. It's not efficient to yell, but it's efficient to speak gently. But many pe people think yelling is more efficient. That's wrong. And then it's not efficient to have bad attitude but it's efficient to have kindness and gentleness. And it's not efficient to be nagging, but it's efficient to be listening and responding. And then it's not efficient not to listen. And then it's more efficient not to let nag. And then uh, it's not efficient to teach too much. And it's efficient to care about him, think about his needs, or her, guide him or her to analyze, guide him or her to change, to, to guide, to care about the person and guide. 
Now, what if one person really doesn't want to change? Now, I'm talking about the situation if, for instance, if both want to change, it is still difficult, but then the marriage can improve. So in a marriage counseling, we need to talk and say, are you willing to change? Do you want to build up the marriage? If they're willing, then there's hope. Now, if one side doesn't want to change, then what happens? If your spouse doesn't want to change, then you need to first get inner healing from God by praying to God and putting down all the hearts from the spouse and get comfort from God and God's strength from God and live in peace and love and no burdens. Now, he doesn't want to listen to me. That is his problem. I don't have to carry the burden. Treat him or her with peace and love. Try to be nice to him or her. Influence him to her gradually, gradually, but not expecting him or her to change quickly. Just influencing her gradually by being nice to him or her. Have realistic expectation. Lower unrealistic expectation. You know, sometimes <clears throat> the other person is not, you know, always get angry and we expect the person to stop being angry. It's not realistic. So we lower the unrealistic expectation. We expect the person to be, uh, not to be angry immediately. Maybe now we just say, okay, I find that in certain situation, he would calm down if I'm nice to him. So I don't expect him to be able to take care of his emotions right away. But slower is fine if he can manage it. But sometimes he doesn't change then we have to accept this. If the spouse doesn't want to change, the spouse always yell, doesn't want to change, then we cannot force him to change. The only way is to be gentle and nice to him. Hopefully he will change. If he doesn't change, accept that and have strength from the Lord and put down the expectation altogether. If he doesn't want to change at all, put down the expectation altogether so that we can have strength from God in spite of the problems of the spouse. So this is a difficult situation, but this is a situation of many people if the spouse has serious problems. And pray for wisdom and love to treat him or her, how to treat him or her. So that's a situation when the other person doesn't want to change, okay? So we'll stop here now. Do you have any question? If you have any question, um, you can send it to me now. If I'll, I'll close to the prayer and then if you have a question, you can ask. If not, we'll stop here and then tomorrow we'll continue, okay? And you can stand up again, relax, and cry out to God. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you care about us. Lord, help us to trust in you. Help us to relax in you, knowing that you really love us. You love us perfectly. People on earth cannot love each other perfectly, but you can love us perfectly. It's so wonderful to have this perfect love from God. Please help us to appreciate your great love. Lord, help us. Help us to appreciate your great love, your great acceptance of us that we don't find in people in the world. But help us, Lord, to have your love so that we can change each other, that we can influence each other, not by force, but gently. Lord, help us to be gentle. Help us to, be, to have peace in you so that we can influence our spouse and family members so that the family can get better and better and get healing. Lord, come to us. Come, Lord Jesus. We can cry out to Jesus. Lord, heal our soul. If we have hurts from the marriage, Lord, heal our soul. Heal our soul. Comfort us. Comfort our soul so that we can put down the hurts. We can accept the forgiveness of God, the love of God, the healing of God, that we can put down these problems. We can put down these problems and enjoy God so that we can be healed, so that we have strength to accept the other person. We have strength to love our spouse and be kind to him or her. 
Lord be with us. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Set us free. Hallelujah. We can cry out loudly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Set us free. Hallelujah. Set us free. Hallelujah. Lord, heal us. Heal us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Set us free, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Lord, help us to be nice to our spouse. Help us to forgive them. Help us to think of our own faults so that we'll apologize, so that we are willing to change and be nice to him or her, be kind to him or her, and build up the marriage again so that we can glorify God in our life and in our marriage and in our ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.